All right, so hello everybody. Welcome to uh, lecture three of uh, PH uh, Science I1 Mathematical Physics. So in the last class, we uh, started talking about uh, representations. And uh, I gave you an example of uh, three different kinds of representations. Uh, so I hope that this concept of a representation is starting to make some sense. Uh, today I will talk more about it. I will give you more explicit examples of representations of a group. So it is important to realize that a group can have many different representations, okay? It can act on, on different kinds of objects. So for instance, here it acts on a spin one half object, here it acts on a, on a vector. Uh, and in this case, it acts on a uh, infinite dimensional state, right? Now, uh, then there is the question of, um, what do you call it? How do you describe the action of a symmetry? Uh, so we describe it by some unitary operator, right? That much I hope is clear. But how, how, how do we say that a unitary operator is a symmetry of your Hamiltonian, right? We, the, that is determined by checking whether or not this commutator of the Hamiltonian and the unitary operator vanishes. And if it vanishes, right, then what happens is, so if you have a state, where you act on one eigenstate of the Hamiltonian with the unitary operator, you get another state, psi prime. And then you can use this, um, this uh, vanishing commutator to show, right, it's a very simple one-line calculation, to show that this transform state is also an eigenstate of the same Hamiltonian. Right? So that means that this unitary operator relates different states, right? All of the states are the same. And this tells us that the eigenstates of the system are degenerate. Update is not happening. Uh, So what we can ask is, what happens to the state if we keep acting on it, this with the unitary transformation, right? As an example, you have this, uh, let's say this three-dimensional Cartesian space, right? In this, you have a subspace. What is a subspace? It is just the XY plane, right? I mean, there are an infinite number of subspaces but you can just consider the XY plane as an example. And you consider a vector in this XY plane, right? And you uh, perform a rotation around the Z axis, right? So for instance, uh, this, this unitary operation could be uh, a rotation around the Z axis, right? What will happen? You will get another vector in the XY plane, right? Which has the same eigenstate. So if you, which has the same uh, energy. So if you take this vector, right? And now you keep rotating around like this, what will happen? You will get us, you will, you will eventually get all the vectors in the X, Y plane, right? So you will generate in this process, you will generate the, this subspace, right? This Hilbert space, which is the X, Y plane the set of vectors in the x y plane, right? Now, uh, since this is also a subspace, it will have some basis vectors, right? So let's say that it has some basis vectors, okay? One, two, n. Then our original state can be written in terms of these basis vectors, right? What happens when I act on my state with a unitary operator, right? I get a new state. 
but this state is in the same subspace right keep this in mind it's in the same subspace so it can again be written as a superposition of the same set of basis vectors right so when i apply this unitary operator right so in this example for for instance when i when i apply a rotation around the z axis to this vector right it will stay in the xy plane it will not develop any component uh, along the z direction right and since it doesn't develop any component along the z direction i can continue to describe it with my basis right basis for instance here could be my x x hat and y hat right so these new coefficients will be related to the old ones right by some matrix rij and this rij will constitute a representation of the group g right so this rij rij will depend on the will dip, will be a function of the group element right g now um okay so now let i'll uh switch to a different uh, example and we'll work out all the details about the different representations um and i mentioned this notion of irreducible and reducible representations i'll uh, we'll we'll see examples of that um uh, in uh, in in today's lecture so continuing the previous discussion of group representations okay now we are going to talk about something that is called the dihedral it's written as d3 okay and what is what is this d d3 this is the group of symmetries of a triangle okay what does that mean well so imagine that again let's uh, make ourselves some uh, coordinates right so this is x and y let's say and let's let's make a make a triangle in this plane okay right and let's give the vertices a name let's say a um b and c okay now i can ask the following question i can ask what are the transformations which take the triangle into itself right which leave the the shape of the triangle invariant right now this is an equilateral triangle right if i didn't mention that and so what you can see hopefully is that uh, and what is the angle here this angle is 120 degrees right so if you apply a rotation right in the plane by 120 degrees so 120 degrees in terms of uh, pi is going to be uh 2/3 2 by 3 pi right what will this do so i'll just draw the triangle symbolically as this object okay so what will r2 2 by 3 and i'll put this abc here what will it do it will give me the same object but what will happen the vertices will be will be permuted right a will go to b b will go to c and c will go to d right c will go to a right so i'll get uh the same triangle but with the vertices permuted right it's a cyclic permutation then what if i apply another another rotation right to this so r uh 2 by 3 pi 
delta C A B. Well, you can see the result will just be another permutation. I'll get B C A, right? And so you can see that if I apply this rotation, uh, if I apply this rotation uh, three times, what will happen? I will get back to my original triangle, right? My original sequence of vertices. So these are these are three uh, these are three of the possible symmetry operations, right? Rotations. How many are there? There are uh, there are two of them. Remember, right? So let's call it R one and R two. R one is the rotation uh, by two pi by three, and R two is the rotation by how much? 240 degrees, right? So we'll write as four pi by three. And then R3, there is no need for R3, right? Okay. But there are some other transformations uh, which um, we have to keep track of. What are those transformations? Well, if you look at, at this line, right, that I'm drawing here, this uh, this dash line, right? It's it's the perpendicular bisector, right? These are the three perpendicular bisectors. So what I can do is I can perform a reflection in the plane, right? So for instance, if this is uh, the x-axis and this is the y-axis, right? Let's say I perform a reflection uh, across. So I will give this these different axes a name, okay? I'll call this, uh, let's say one, two, and three, okay? So let me reflect, if I reflect my triangle, right? So this is the, T is my symbol for reflection, and one indicates that I'm reflecting across uh, this first, the first one, which is coming down from me. What will happen? I will get a triangle, right? But now uh, C and B will be switched, right? And what happens if I reflect it again in the same? I will get the, the same triangle back, right? So similarly, there are two other reflections, right? T2, delta ABC. What does T2 do? it will switch A and C, right? So I'll get um, C, B, A, and then once again, T2 acting again will give me delta A, B, C, and T3 will switch, as you can guess, uh, what will it switch? A and B, right? So this gives me delta B, A, C. Acting on this again gives me uh, delta ABC. Okay, so I have R1, R2, uh, and um, instead of this capital one, capital capital three, I'll just call it one, two, three. It's probably simpler that way. One, so T1, T2, T3. Okay, but now, um, so, so the, these set of operations, they will form a group, right? Why will they form a group? Because what will happen if I, if I combine any two of these operations, right? Oh, and I forgot one more operation is there, which is very important, which is the identity. Right? The identity has to be there, right? So what will happen if I combine two of these operations? For instance, if I take R1 and R2, or R2 and R1, what do I get? I get the identity, right? What if I take R1 squared, I get R2. What if I take R2 squared? So now that is a rotation by 240 and by 240, right? So that's 480. 
so 360 so that is equal to r1 you can convince yourself that this is what happens right then what about uh, t1 and t2 for instance what happens if i act on my triangle with this right with the t1 and t2 right so what will t2 do t2 will will permute uh will permute a and c it will switch a and c right so i will get delta cba right what about t1 t1 will switch b and c right so it what does t1 do it switches the second and third indices so the second and third label so t1 will switch uh, these two these two labels b and a right and so i'll get delta cab but now you look at this delta cab right and we see that delta cab can be obtained by acting on the original configuration with r right with r1 so i can write this as r1 delta abc right so what does this tell me it tells me that t1 t2 is equal to r1 right so now in this way what we can do is we can write down a multiplication table okay so the column uh, the rows and columns are labeled by r group elements r1 r2 t1 t2 t3 okay and what uh, so this is a matrix right so this is the called the group multiplication table and also i guess i didn't mention it but this is an example of a discrete group okay unlike rotations which are which are which is a continuous group now what is the multiplication table well one identity times identity is one right then these elements will just be identity identity uh, times r1 identity times r2 right so you will just get the same elements and then same thing here right what about the diagonal elements the diagonal elements also um, so for instance r1 squared right that is this uh, this one this diagonal element r1 squared what is that equal to r2 right similarly r2 squared is r1 then what else did we have we have worked out t1 t2 right so this is t2 T two, T one is equal to R one, right? So in this way, you can fill out this this matrix, right? And I will leave that for you as an exercise to fill out all the rest of this of the elements, right? So it's a six by six matrix, and it's a group multiplication table. Now, so what are the properties of these transformations, right? For any for any two elements of this set right so this is my set g and if i take any two elements of the set right and there is a notion of multiplication which i just explained to you what do i have i have g1 g2 is equal is also in g right for any element in this set there exists an element right which is also an element of g such that g times g inverse is equal to the identity is equal to g inverse times g right so for example for what is r1 inverse it is r2 right what is r2 inverse 
R2 inverse uh, is what? Uh, so, um, I, I think it will just be R1. Okay, I'll just, just check it, not sure. Right, and similarly, what is T1 inverse? Well, T1 inverse is T1, T2 inverse is equal to T2 and so on. Right, so this, this is a group. Now, the important thing to see here is that I have not at any stage said that this is a matrix, right? That these operations are described by matrices. I've given you a very dis, uh, abstract description of these. These are just operations, right? I haven't described what form they take, okay? So now uh, let's, uh, let's uh, use the language of, of rotations in two dimensions, okay? So in two dimensions, I can write down a rotation in the following way, right? I can write it as cosine theta, and then I always forget, is it minus sign here or is it sign here? It's one of the two, right? So what is R1? R1 is R two pi by three, right? So a rotation by two pi by three, if you, if you put in um, the cosine, right? So, so cosine of 120 degrees, um, is equal to uh, minus of the cosine of 60 degrees, right? Minus cosine, or is it, uh, yeah, 60 degrees, which is equal to one half, mi minus one half, sorry, right? Similarly, sine 120 is equal to sine 180 minus 60, right? And And what is this? This is going to be equal to uh, sine 60, right, which is what, which is root, root 3 by 2, and so on. So these, these elements become minus 1 half, minus root 3 by 2, root 3 by 2, and then minus 1 half, right? This is my rotation matrix, right? Now, this is an example of a representation. Right. This is a representation of my group element, which is R1, right? Now, similarly, I can ask, what is R2? Well, R2 is the rotation by two pi by three, okay? And you can work out the matrix elements. I'll just write them down here. Root three by two, root three by two, minus one half, okay? And uh, as an exercise, you can check the following, that R1 squared is equal to R2, okay? So what is R1 squared? It is just the matrix multiplication, this R1, matrix multiplication of R1 with itself. And similarly, you can check that R1, R2 is equal to R2, R1 is equal to the identity, okay? Now, what about reflection, right? So this covers the rotations. So um, let me put that here. Rotations, now let's talk about the, about the reflections, right? So for instance, if you look at uh, the reflection T1, Okay, and again, let me just call this one, two, and three. So what, what is the reflection uh, T1 correspond to, right? What happens to the Y coordinate doesn't change, right? And the X coordinate is flipped, right? Because you're reflecting across the Y axis. So what does T1 do? If you, if you act with T1 on a vector x, y, or, or on a point x, y in the plane, 
what do you get? You get minus x comma y, right? So if I want to write T1 as a matrix, what will be the form of this matrix? It will be minus one, zero, zero, one, right? And this is T1, okay? What about T2 and T3? Now T2 and T3 are a little bit uh, less uh, simpler to work out, but you can work them out. And I'll leave that as an exercise for you again. Root three by two, root three by two, minus one half, and T3 is equal to one by two, minus root three by two, minus one half, okay? And as I said, exercise show this, okay? So how will you work that out? I mean, in case anybody is not clear about this. Um, well, if you want to perform a, a reflection about the axis, which I've labeled two, right? If you want to perform a reflection around this axis, right? Around this axis. How can you do it? Well, one way to do it is the following. You take your triangle, okay? And then you rotate it in the plane by minus 120 degrees. So you rotate it, uh, since I'm using the, so you rotate it clockwise, right? Since the convention I'm using is that counterclockwise rotation, right? This is counterclockwise, going around like this. This is counterclockwise. So this is the positive rotation. So you take this and you rotate it in the, clockwise direction by um, 120 degrees. What is that? That is just going to be R1, but with a negative value of theta, right? What will that do? That will bring all the points so that your T2 axis lies along this plane, uh, you know, along this axis, along the Z axis. Then you perform a reflection. You perform a reflection along across the Y axis which we know. And then we again rotate back by R1, right? So if you want to write down the matrix form of, of T2, how can you do that? You can do that as follows, right? First you rotate by R1 inverse, then you perform a reflection in T1, and then you again rotate uh, with R1, okay? Now these matrices we already have, we have R1, we have T1, so we can, we can, uh... okay? So I've shown you how to do it also. It should not be so difficult, okay? Okay, now, um, let's, uh, let's look at uh, another, so we have, so this is, this is a discrete group and this is called the dihedral group of order three. Similarly, one has uh, the higher order dihedral groups so D of N is the group of symmetries. Of a N gun, right? So D4 is a group of symmetries of a square. D5 is a group of symmetries of a pentagon and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, now uh, let's uh, consider uh, uh, another system, let's consider a spin one half system. Okay, so well, um, I'll, I'll come to this later. Okay, so what's next? Right, let's talk about reducibility. So let me now talk about 
uh, the notion of reducible and irreducible representations, right? And we just shorten that to reps. And in the literature, you will also see uh, this abbreviation, irreps. Irreps stands for irreducible representations. Okay, so let's consider uh, rotations in three dimensions. Okay. And let's uh, take a rotation around the z-axis in three dimensions. Okay. Now, how can you write this rotation? What is this? This is simply, this is a rotation around the plane, right? This is a rotation in the xy plane. Right? So I can write this as following, as follows. R Z theta, right? So I have my X, Y, and Z. So my X and Y are rotated, right? In the usual manner. My Z axis is left untouched. Okay. Now, if you look at this set of matrices, if you look at this RZ set of matrices, okay. And you take two such matrices corresponding to two different rotations and you multiply them. What do you get? You get a third rotation around the X axis, right? So this matrix, right? We can think of it in two ways. We can think of it either as an element of SO3. What is SO3? It's a group of rotations in three dimensions. Another way to think of it is that it is a representation of SO2. Okay? Why is it a representation of SO2? because it obeys the group multiplication property of SO2, right? So this Z is not really doing anything. It's, it's just hanging out there, right? So how can we, uh, we can, how, can, how can we think of this? Such a representation can be written in, in the following way. Okay, we'll, let me write down the notation and then I will explain to you what it means. So we have R of one uh, theta, then this is the direct sum and then R of two theta. What is this <coughs> direct sum? What is R one of theta and R two of theta? Okay, well, R one of theta, this is just the identity which acts on the on the z component right so that corresponds to this to this one element right and what is r2 of theta r2 of theta is a 2 by 2 rotation in the xy plane Okay. This is my two by two rotation in the XY plane, which corresponds to R2. And what is this direct product, direct sum, right? So what is this? This is called the direct sum. Okay. What does it mean uh, when I you know, say something is a, is a direct sum? Now, remember in quantum mechanics, we talked about we use this symbol, right? Which is the direct product 
or the uh, outer product or the tensor tensor product right but what is the direct sum we haven't we haven't talked about that so if you have any two vector spaces okay let's say you have two vector spaces v1 and v2 and these vector spaces can be of different dimensionality okay let's say uh, the first one is of dimension m and the second one is of dimension n okay then what does the direct product give us right this gives us another vector space right whose dimension is how much can somebody tell me m n m times n right and uh, if i have two matrices uh, one is an element of v1 another is an element of m v2 so for instance let's say i have m1 um i'll just call it tilde m is an element of v1 tilde n is an element of v2 oops right and i take the tensor product of these what do i get i get a third matrix right let me call that p which is an element of this v1 tensor v2 right and how do i write down the uh, elements of p i can write them like this p i j k l is equal to m i k n j l okay and so from this you can see that for instance what is the range of i the range of i is m right from 1 to m what is the range of j from 1 to n so what will be the range of ij this will be from 1 to mn and same thing for knl okay as an example if you take a tensor product of Two two by two matrices, you will get a four by four matrix, right? Okay. Now, let me just put this all over here. What happens if I take the the direct sum of two vector spaces? Well, if I take the direct sum of two vector spaces, I get another vector space whose dimension is m plus n. Okay. how do i construct uh, how do what is the construction do well once again i'll take a matrix which is an element of v1 and a matrix which is sorry so, so i have just made a mistake uh, matrices so these these are vector spaces right so matrices are not elements of the vector spaces they are uh, the operators which act on the vector space okay i just want to be careful about this let me write it in this way um so by this i mean o of v1 means the set of operators which act on v1 so m is a matrix it's an operator which acts on v1 and same thing here this is a an element of the operators which act on v2 okay and uh, the same thing here this is o v1 tensor okay all right then then this is the same right this line is the same what about this line the second line what is m direct sum n well this is an operator this is a matrix which acts on this direct sum vector space and what does it look like right so if we write it as a matrix what are the elements of this matrix p we can we can write this matrix p as follows we take m 
and put it here and we take n and put it here. right like this everything else here is zero zero right so my matrix p what are the indices the indices go from 1 to m plus n and 1 to m plus n right the first m rows and the first m columns contain the elements of the matrix m and the next a set of rows and columns how many are there there are n remaining rows and columns they contain the elements of the matrix n okay so as an example right if i take a a vector space which is two dimensional and i take a vector space which is one dimensional okay so two dimensional vector space what is the matrix what does the matrix look like it's a 2 by 2 matrix right what is this this is just a single number right it's one dimensional so if i take the direct sum of v1 and v2 right and then i have uh the direct sum of m and n what will that look like it will look like a 3 by 3 matrix whose elements are m11 m12 m21 m22 0 0 00 and what about here this is n1 there is only one element of n1 right so this is a direct sum of two different uh matrices now what does this have to do with uh, this example that i gave you earlier if you look at this if you look at this matrix you can see that it is also a direct sum of two matrices right there is a block diagonal part this is called a block diagonal matrix so this is a block one block and this is the second block the first block is an element of corresponds to an element of 2 by 2 matrices 2 by 2 rotations in the plane and the second block is also is just an identity you can also think of that as a representation but it's a trivial representation okay so if we have this representation of the group of rotations rotations in two dimensions if i use this as a representation of the group of rotations i will call this such a such a representation is called reducible what does that mean reducible means that my representation can be a written representation or or a direct sum of two or more uh, representations uh now this will again become clear to you only with more examples as we go forwards okay um so yeah i think i'll 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 probably um Uh, and before stopping let me let me just just say one thing one more thing here i have mentioned right here i have said that this identity this one number is a representation of my group of rotations in two dimensions what how can it be a representation it doesn't do anything na well a representation doesn't have to do anything as such okay remember what is a representation a representation is a map right so if you have a group element a representation gives you a map from the group element to a matrix right and this matrix acts on some vector space right so this matrix is some n dimensional object 
it's an n by n matrix and it acts on some vector space right which will have dimension n right so the group of rotations in two dimensions has a two dimensional representation what is that two dimensional representation it is just this but it also has a one dimensional representation in fact any group has a one dimensional representation what is that one dimensional representation it's a trivial representation right 1d rep you just take every element of the group and map it to the to one or to to the identity if you want right so this is called the this is the trivial representation this doesn't do anything so you might say well it's not really in what sense is it representing the group and well i mean technically it is still a valid representation even though it doesn't like have any operational effect on the on the on any system okay so i'll stop here for today and see if you have any questions Are you all still there? I don't even know if you're there. I don't know if you're there. No. Questions? A note now, sir. Okay. All right. Then I'll stop the recording. Okay.